Hello, guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of uh, Unique Items. Today we're going to be looking at uh, a truly uh, unique item because they are horrifying goblin toes. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, they are the uh, the items known as Goblin Toe in Diablo 2. And uh, the Goblin Toe light-plated boots are absolutely exceptional, but only because of one stat. Uh, everything else on them kind of sucks. And uh, and why do people love these boots? Well, it's because of Crushing Blow. Well, let's go over the stats on these boots, just because, and, uh, and we'll talk about them. So we have a, uh, a defense of 34, which does vary slightly. Uh, no, not really that much. Uh, we have a durability of 12 of 18. We've got uh, required level, uh, required strength 50. And uh, we also have a required level of 22. So at level 22, we can put on these boots and we can gain the effects of 25% chance of crushing blow, which is an amazing effect. So this will give us a 25% chance to deal 25% damage to a monster's hit points. Um, so essentially what this means is that if a monster is uh, running around, we could literally punch them and dish out 25% damage to their hit point pool. Now it is their current hit point pool, not their maximum hit point pool. Um, this is important. So if I run out here and I literally just punch monsters, um, occasionally you will see the 25% crushing blow effect chunk their HP down. Now this does not, however, work on uh, elites and bosses the same way. So when you are attacking an elite or a boss, the 25% crushing blow actually goes down to 12.5%. If you are a ranged character, it's actually halved again to 6.25%, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's, it's low. I remember it being very low. Now, that's not to say that it doesn't still work, but uh, when you attack a monster with a ranged attack, like a bow, uh, you do have a much diminished effect on bosses. It's 12.5% on range with a, uh, normal enemies, and uh, 6.25 versus champions, uniques, and bosses. And uh, both of them get penalties on uh, PvP as well, so it's 10% uh, versus... Uh, you know, melee monsters uh, with a melee weapon. I'm sorry, me melee weapons, and it's uh, five percent uh, on PvP with a, uh, a bow. And I, I horribly messed that up, but that's okay. Uh, we also have sixty percent enhanced defense, which does vary by ten percent, and uh, and that ten percent is not really a huge amount. But if you do plan to use these, uh, you can actually upgrade them. Uh, we have 15 bonus defense, which is just flat added right onto the top. And then we have a uh, damage reduced by 1, magic damage reduced by 1, and a negative 1 to light radius. Um, as far as these boots go, the main reason you were going to ever use these boots is for the crushing blow. If you don't need the crushing blow, you're not going to use these boots. And uh, they can be upgraded. So if you wanted to, to specifically upgrade uh, the goblin toes, you would need a, uh, a shale rune, a... Uh, Tal rune and a perfect diamond, uh, which I'm going to have to go grab real quick. Now we're going to go ahead and upgrade these um, to the um, the uh, nightmare version. Uh, but before we do that, um, I have forgotten one important thing when it comes to boots, uh, which boots have a kick damage statistic. And uh, we're going to take a look at them really quickly on an assassin so that we can take a look at the kick damage. Um, kick damage is something that is very specific to assassins, and just the same way that you can only see smite damage if you're holding a shield on a paladin, you can only see kick damage if you're holding a uh, pair of boots on an assassin. So as you can see, we have 8 to 16 kick damage, and uh, and that's not bad for a normal difficulty pair of boots, but uh, you can probably get some, uh, some better ones around level 22. And, uh, and we're going to upgrade these on the assassin, that way we can get a better look at the kick damage as we upgrade it. All right, so if you would like to upgrade a pair of Goblin Toad boots, you will need a Shale, a Tal, and a Perfect Diamond. And uh, the kick damage, or sorry, the defense is 34, the kick damage is 8 to 16, the uh, required strength is 50, and the level is 22. And that upgrades to a uh, defense of 80 with a uh, kick damage of 37 to 64. As you can see, the kick damage has gone up a huge amount uh, from the light plated boots to the battle boots. And uh, we get a strength of 95 with a level requirement of 30. Um, if you were to use these on a kick assassin, I would definitely recommend upgrading these at least one tier. 
As you can see, the difference between 8 to 16 and 37 to 64 on the kick damage is rather huge. <laughs> Uh, we're going to upgrade these one more time, and to do that, you would need a uh, Co Rune, a Lem Rune, and a Perfect Diamond, if I remember correctly, uh, which is going to go from 80 defense, 37 to 64 kick damage, 12, uh, sorry, uh, 95 strength, and uh, level 30 requirement, to a uh, defense of 114, they go to mirrored boots, with a kick damage of 50 to 145, a strength requirement of 163, and a level requirement of 72. So a rather massive um, increase in the strength requirement and level requirement going from the, uh, the Nightmare to the Hell version. However, the kick damage did go extremely high uh, by comparison to the original boots. So we were looking at the only 8 to 16 kick damage all the way up to the 50 to 145. Now, this is not the only boots that you might use on a kick assassin. Um, you could also potentially use Shadow Dancer Myrmidon Greaves. And also, um, if I have them uh, handy, the upgraded, fully upgraded Gore Riders, which I don't seem to have handy. But that's okay. Um, fully upgraded Gore Riders are going to be the same damage as the Myrmidon Greaves, which is 83 to 149. So you can see um, even the damage on the Myrmidon Greaves is a little higher than the Mirrored Boots. But if you were to specifically be looking for that 25% crushing blow on, say, your Kick Assassin, uh, the 25% crushing blow would be nice if you could combine it with the higher Kick damage. So you would probably want to upgrade these three times. Um, if you're a regular player who is not concerned about kick damage, uh, one tier upgrade might be uh, advisable. Uh, the second tier upgrade, maybe not so much, unless you happen to have the kind of strength that is required <coughs> for Goblin Toe Mirror Boots. Now, if we use um, a Spirit Monarch Shield, which is strength 156, as an example, um, we would still need, on top of the 156 for the Spirit Monarch Shield, we would need another four, five, six, seven strength um, to be able to use the, the mirrored goblin toe boots. Is the extra defense worth the uh, the trouble? I don't know. I feel like uh, goblin toes are a pretty solid one tier upgrade. They're actually very decent at uh, at low tier as well. Uh, the defense difference between the 33 and the 80 of the um, of the mid tiers is actually not bad and uh, I don't really feel like the 80 to 114 is really that big of a deal but um, if you were just mid maxing to you know to your heart's content and you could fit in a pair of goblin toad mirror boots and you were using goblin toes anyway in your build upgrading them at least one tier would be great and upgrading them to the third tier if it's viable would be uh, a little bit of extra defense that might help you out um, now when it comes to the ethereal versions of these um, I don't I generally think there's any real use for them except for maybe PvP um, because they will eventually break and uh, you will be sad. And that's pretty much all there is to cover with uh, Goblin Toad Mirrored Boots. If you'd like to explore uh, Crushing Blow in more depth, um, I do actually have a video uh, already up uh, covering Crushing Blow in, in its entirety. And um, although this item's entire purpose is Crushing Blow, I don't really want to go over Crushing Blow in this particular video. Uh, but if you take a look on my uh, my YouTube channel, uh, which uh, you don't know want, we'll, we'll do it right here on the screen, shall we? And I will type in uh, my Crushing Blue. That was incorrect. I typed it in wrong. Crushing blow. Here we go. Pink, 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 pink. And I'll pull this up on the screen so you can see it. So uh, this is my crushing blow video right here, and. Um, although I'm not going to uh, actually play it here. Um, I go over everything, including uh, you know how much HP the, the, it does, um, how it works. I, I demonstrate how it works. I use it on a bow. I use it on a, uh, on a, um, a weapon. I get 100% crushing blow so that you can really see how it works despite um, you know all of the individual things. So you can watch how the crushing blow is affecting the monsters. Um, you know, and uh, and I even use relatively low damage weapons so that you can specifically really see um, how you know the the crushing blow works by itself 
sans any type of elemental damage or sans any type of physical damage. Um, so you're really getting the full effect of what Crushing Blow is. And, uh, and I will put that link down in the description below for you guys and that way you can uh, you can look at that and uh, you can get a better idea of um, of what crushing blow is and whether or not you would like to use goblin toe boots now there are other options um, you can use gore riders gore riders have less crushing blow but they also have some other nice effects on them and i think most people tend to go with uh, the gore riders but there are reasons why you would go with goblin toes over gore riders um, gore Riders have open wounds and deadly strike as well. Um, if you already had a sufficient amount of open wounds, you wouldn't necessarily need that. Um, if you already had a sufficient amount of deadly strike, you wouldn't necessarily need that either, and maybe you would like more crushing blow. Or maybe you're on an ability that doesn't use deadly strike. Like, for instance, uh, Vengeance does not is not affected by a Deadly Strike at all. Um, so, you know, Deadly Strike doesn't do a Vengeance Paladin any good. Uh, there are other characters that have uh, skills that do not work with Deadly Strike, so it's important to remember this when you're choosing the type of boots that you would like to wear. Uh, one of the big downsides of Goblin Toes, however, is that it does not have faster run walk. That is very sad. Um, so you're going to have to get faster run walk from other sources. And... Um, I feel like that's one of the, that's a really big downside because most boots tend to have 20, 30 or 40% faster run walk and uh, and having no faster run walk at all is uh is means you're going to run you're going to run around really slow which uh, which does suck. Uh, where can you find goblin toe boots? Um, they're relatively low on the treasure class and you're going to find them pretty much throughout all of uh, normal difficulty probably I want to say like Act 3 and up, uh, uh, Mephisto would probably be one of the monsters that would drop Goblin Toes in Act 3. And then uh, in Act 4 and Act 5, you'll probably see them pretty often. Um, they're not relatively rare. Um, you'll see G-Toes a lot. A lot of people will uh, will grab them, though. And uh, actually, I think I have like six or seven Goblin Toes, and I've given them away um, during my free games here and there, which is... Um, you know, it's something that you do. You, if you find something good like this, uh, maybe you don't specifically need it, you'll hold on to it for somebody else who, who does need it. And um, it's really all there is to it. Uh, anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, and, uh, and keep watching.